was a very mm, at the end. I like that. that. Thank you very much, Dr. Farragut. Welcome. We are so glad that you are here at Faith United Church of Christ, both in person and online where you gather in Canada, Michigan, England, India, and in State College, wherever you are, there is God and we are with you as well. So we are so glad that you're here this morning. Oh, I'm so happy to see so many of you. Uh, welcome in God's grace and peace and this, and this beautiful morning. If maybe it's less heat today. Maybe, I'm not sure, we'll see, um, but I mentioned it in the sermon. We have a, quite a few announcements this morning before we enter our worship. I can feel the fall right around the corner as things get put on the, the calendar. Things are quieter in the summer and things begin picking up here shortly. So a few uh, announcements from me, and then there's some folks that have some announcements for you. In August, I just want this on your radar, you'll hear uh, in Faith Works on Wednesday, August 14th, we will have a Hymn Sing Sunday. We usually do this during the summer where you are able to call out your favorite hymns and we sing together. It's a, it's a really fun Sunday. So uh, come on August 14th for Hymn Sing Sunday. August 21st, Rachel will be driving up from Georgia and will be with us in worship and they will be leading uh, worship that Sunday. I'll be here um, and we'll also have communion on that Sunday. I know that's not when we typically have communion, but this will be the first time Rachel officiates at the communion table and they are given that permission from the committee on ministry. So it'll be a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Many of you know Rachel is getting ordained through Faith Church, uh, and we look forward to welcoming them back. And then the final Sunday, uh, August, or second finals, August 28th, uh, Marina and her mom and Georgia and Sydney, who are worshiping at home in Canada, will be traveling from Canada to be with us in person. Isn't that amazing? I mean, think about that for a moment. We have become their home church and they are worshiping from Canada every Sunday with us. So make sure you're here because they're excited to meet us and we're excited to meet you and uh, in person and you are just as much a part of Faith Church as someone who lives down the block. So we're very excited about that. So on August 28th, Brittany's going to update us on another event happening. Brittany? Hello. Um, an update from the Fellowship Committee that August 28th will also be our second annual, I suppose, um, kayak church. So we will be over at, oh my gosh, what is it called? Howard. What? Howard Dam. Howard Dam. Thank you. Um, for the kayak church, early in the morning. We've got permit things getting settled, so we hope to see all of you there in the morning. And then I'm understanding there's also going to be, the church will be open that Sunday as well, and there will be a service here. So just choose either on the water or in the beautiful congregation. Not yeah. segregation. <laughs> two oh two congregations, the pews and the kayaks. You could do both, too, that morning. That's all right. Um, and we're exploring, since some folks will be from out of town, we're exploring the idea of perhaps a, a picnic after church or some way that we can all be together here. So the, some things in the works on, on that. Uh, Karen... If you would love to come forward and give an update on our refugee family, uh, you know that our church, St. Paul's and the Unitarian Fellowship are all partnering together in this refugee family who is here. And there's a wonderful update from our Karen. Um, the microphone's right by Mary Jane. If you press the button down until the light comes on, it will magnify your voice. Perfect. Thank you, Karen. Good morning. I'm Karen babs Pollitt. I serve on the Education Committee supporting our family. So I meet with them twice a week to help them with English tutoring. And yesterday I had the joy of joining Sadaf and many of her new friends at her baby shower. It was a wonderful event and she feels like she has most of the things that she needs. 
Uh, her due date is this Friday, and she is scheduled to be induced into labor on Friday. So by this time next week, there will most likely be a baby that we can celebrate. I will say if anyone is interested in providing a baby shower gift, they understand that there will be things that they need after the baby is born, uh, especially diapers. So monetary gifts uh, would be appreciated. So if you have any interest in, in donating some money for diapers, uh, you can see me about that. Uh, the family is so thankful to be connected with our church and the others. They've just really been grateful for all the support you've given. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. I know uh, what you don't always see during the week is that the church is active in many different ways. Karen's helping tutor with English. Zach has brought um, the young nephew to and from soccer appointments, and I'm saying appointments, uh, games, I mean, soccer games and hanging out with them and helping with the English. And it's just been, a, it's been so inspiring uh, to me, inspirational to me to watch you all be God's body and love in this community. Uh, we have an update from Mark uh, on our organ. Dr. Farragutta, we're happy that you're back. And uh, you know he had COVID and he's recovered and we're so happy you're here. So Dr. Farragutta. Good morning. Thanks by the way for the prayers. I'm feeling much better and over, the, over everything. So it's good to be back. Um, <clears throat> you might not know that this organ actually predates the church at least parts of it go back to 1924, which means that actually this organ will be celebrating its 100th anniversary in 2024, uh, believe it or not. Um, the, the organ is in pretty good shape considering she's turning 100, um, but there are, some, there are some issues and we formed a small committee um, to look at those. We've already, um, been able to begin addressing some of those. Some of the pipes will be actually taken out quite soon and brought to Mark Cooley's workshop to have some work done on them, and then they'll be reinstalled. We had uh, some money in the budget for this, and an anonymous donor has also contributed to addressing those immediate needs, which is wonderful. And then in the fall, we're gonna be starting a campaign to make some further improvements to this wonderful instrument and we hope that that will happen in time for the 2024 celebration. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. We've, uh, our committee has been looking at some organs in the area. They've been doing a lot of work. I really am thankful to them. And we'll be in touch with more information on all that in the coming uh, weeks. So thanks very much. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. If you're on that organ committee, could you just raise your hand so folks know, uh, Jackie, Clovis, I know Reverend Ann Graves is on the committee. I, that's right, and James, uh, who I know is worshiping at home. So thank you for serving and, and your wisdom. And and uh, Dr. Farragutta, we miss you when you're gone. So we're glad, <laughs> we're very glad that you're back. Um, we have so many announcements. Are there any other announcements I'm missing? Yes, Mary Jane, please. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I just want to remind people that you should be uh, getting through the mail calendars and uh, notepads, tote bags, etc. And what I do, if you don't need them all, you can bring them into church and in the uh, <laughs> room, you'll see a basket near Pastor Cass, uh, Jess's office where you can put them because I take them to, uh, used to be called the Woman's Resource Center, it's now Center Safe, and they can use the calendars and the notepads and the, your bags, et cetera. So it's a good, good way to, uh, you know, I can't use 20 calendars myself, so I thought uh, I would just let you know that uh, there is a place you can use, uh, bring them, and they will definitely be used. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mary Jane, I appreciate it. Uh, two final announcements. One, if you receive our weekly e-newsletter, you saw this on Wednesday, which means if you didn't see it, highly encourage you to email our office to ask to get on the weekly e-newsletter. It has a lot of information about what's going on in the church. The consistory, this First, let me stop and say this consistory has been carrying a, and the consistory is a, is a fancy word that means church board. Uh, and there are about 12 
people on the church board. President Sue Cromwell is our president, and they are the ones that are tasked by our bylaws to help make some big decisions for the church. As you know, they have, uh, and I meet with them monthly, uh, we've been praying and thinking and watching the numbers for COVID in Center County, what's been going on. One of the big decisions for this consistory is, has been really paying attention to when all ages are able to be vaccinated. This consistory cares deeply about our children and those under five who have now recently been able to be vaccinated. That has been a guiding force for this consistory who cares about all ages. Because of that, as of today, masking is optional now in our sanctuary, but we also want you to remember that there are many people that have um, health ailments in our, in our congregation who might be going through different medical um, care. And so we don't want to just throw a mask off and everybody's you know, excited. You might, that's fine. It could be you. Um, but just be mindful. Our Christian love guides us and continues to lead us forward. That being said, you are able to not wear a mask or you're able to wear a mask. It is up to your discernment. The consistory has uh, been doing a lot of heavy uh, lifting and they continue, uh, Sue will be here next Sunday to share more, but they continue to discern and care about your safety, our safety and our love and worship together. If you have any questions for the consistory, please feel free to email Sue. Uh, I just, I wanna thank, thank them. Brittany's on our consistory, Larry's on our consistory. So many people here are on our consistory really doing hard, hard work um, and, and trying to love and guide this church well. So can we just thank the consistory for all of their care? Mary Jane. And in that vein, one of the things as everybody's starting to get vaccinated, we're starting to see <clears throat> more and more kids in in the sanctuary, which is great. I love it so much, I miss your kids. So we're gonna start incorporating the children's time back before the sermon. And this week, I know some folks that were at Bible school have some things to share with us. I have mine as well. If you weren't at Bible school, that's okay too. Just all of the kids, I can't wait to see you and hang out with you, I miss you. So much going on, let's take a deep breath. <laughs> This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Come and find rest for your soul. Come and find strength for the journey ahead. If you're at home, I invite you to light your candles as we have here to symbolize that Christ is the one leading our church and that light goes before us. Let us join one another into worship with the call to worship found in our bulletin and Brittany will lead us in that. Good morning everyone. As always, I will read the unbolded and you can read along with the bolded parts. When the way is difficult and dangerous, let us still choose what is good and just. When evil comes to break us down or break us apart, let us still choose to carry on with each other. When power from on high strikes fear in our hearts, let us still choose the courage to persist. For we know that the love of and power of God abides in us. We will not be overcome nor grow weary in doing good. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God, of sacred and scandalous ways, we still have so much to learn. By your grace, we have come to love more deeply than once before. Its mess, its complexity, its stubborn and tender truth transform us more each day. We confess how quickly it is to get overwhelmed with the problems of the world. We move between exhaustion from trying to do it all ourselves to apathy of trying to tune out the cares of the world. We confess that sometimes our priorities struggle. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage 
for the living of these days. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. The mercy of God is new for you this morning. God's grace meets us, wakes us up, forgives us, and renews us each day. Come and be renewed in this grace. For as far as the east is from the west, so far or have our sins been removed from us. As a sign of that forgiveness, live at peace with God, live at peace in your own heart, and live at peace with your neighbors. As a sign of that peace, I invite you to stand as you are able and share the peace of Christ with those gathered here and online. The peace of Christ be with you all. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, peace, so much peace. Let us remain standing as you are able, as you are able, uh, and let us sing our opening hymn, hymn number 25, O God, our help in ages past. All right, our, our scripture reading today comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. They were gathered at Soko, which belonged to Judah, and encamped between Soko and Ezekah in Ephesdemim. Saul and the Israelites gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah and formed ranks against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on the mountains on one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, with a valley in between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had greaves of bronze on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and his shield bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and are you not servants of Saul? 
Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all of Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he, he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and cho chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell down on the ground. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite all of the kids who are here to come forward. I have missed you. You're welcome to come forward. I have a bummed knee, so I'm going real slow and wobbly. <laughs> but come on over. Hey, can you give me the microphone, please? Thank you. Come on over. Come on over, kid children. Hi. Good to see you. No, that's not how the song goes. <laughs> Come on over. Good to see you all. Hi. I'm going to sit right here. Hi. Oh, my word. It's so good to see you. Hi. Hi. I'm Pastor Jess. If you guys forgot, hi. I'm so good to see you. Well, hi, Robbie. Do you want to sit right here? I know that we've got some very uh, dashing uh, bow tie tuxedo coming down and a beautiful dress. Come on over. Hi, you guys. Did you bring your... Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Come on. Go ahead and sit right there. Awesome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's try. Let's, let's say it on the count of three as loud as we can. One, let's say good morning. One, two, three. Good morning. Do you think they can get louder? Yeah, let's see, let's ask. On the count of three, you say good morning to the kids. One, two, three. Good morning. Wow, that was pretty loud. They're excited to see you because they love you all very much. And we've been praying for all of you. Henry, I'm so glad to see you. Um, this week, a few of us were at St. John's Church in Bullsburg. How many of you were there? Yeah, that's right. Some of us were there. And what were we doing there? Do you know what it was? Uh, I think... I don't remember. Did you, did you learn about Bible stories? Well, yeah. Yeah, and um, William, did you bring something that you made? Yeah, can you t show us? Can you hold it up for everybody so they can see? Yeah, what is it? Can you tell us what that is? Bob. Bob, yeah. Is Bob, is Bob a raccoon? No. No. Is Bob a tiger? What is Bob? A rock. A rock! Hold it up real tall so everybody can see here. Kids, you want to see? Look at Bob. What color is he? Green, black, yeah. Bob is, is have we learned if Bob is kind yet? He is. Bob is kind now. Okay, we didn't know the other night. We had to get to know him a little bit. Um, a few of us were at St. John's, and I know Miss Lois was one of the teachers there. Um, I also made a rock. Uh, what color is on my rock? Pink and purple. Pink and purple. And also gold. And also gold. That's true. Do you want to hold my rock? Yeah. It's heavy. Yeah, that's good. And it says, do you know what it says on it? Athens. 
peace, peace. It starts with a peace. Peace. You want to, you, yep, go ahead. Go ahead, Robbie. You're a very good helper. We learned that last week. A very good helper. I also made a rock. And um, in today's story in the Bible, in, it's in 1 Samuel 17, there's a story. I'm going to get real big here about this big guy in the Bible. And he was a fighter and warrior. Do you know what his name was? They were a little scared of this guy, big and tall, and yeah, that's good. I, get your rock ready. This is what we need. And did you catch it in the story what the big guy's name was? Goliath. Can you repeat after me? Goliath. Goliath. What an interesting name. Do you have a Goliath on the, your best friends? Any of you have a best friend Goliath? Yeah, I don't either, but we do in the story here. This Goliath comes out, and he wants to talk to the people of God. And he says, if you make me fall, then I will serve you. But if I make you fall, he says to this guy named David. And David, Robbie, can you stand up for a moment? Can you come here, honey? David's the youngest, really cute <laughs> little brother. So this is, you're our David with the stone. Thank you. This is so good. And David comes forward and says, I can fight them. What do you think he used to fight Goliath? Yeah. A stone. A stone. Did you read the Bible? Oh, okay, this is good. Oh, this is good. Thank you very much. He found five smooth stones like Bob. Pulled Bob back up for everybody to see, like my peace stone and others. And he used this, he got a slingshot, and Goliath was towering down. Goliath had all this big equipment, and the only thing that was needed was five smooth stones. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, he, God didn't use any weapons or anything of that matter, just stones, just what we, he already had. And he found that at the lake in the desert. This week, when you are going outside to the playground, any of you going to the playground this week? Do you have a playground at your home? Some of you do, yeah? Do you have any rocks by your house? I want you to find a rock this week, and I want you to think, what is one thing that God has gifted you that you're especially good at and that God uses to help bring good in this world? Do you have any idea? What are some of the things that you're good at? Well, actually, I had a question about the story. Okay. How much time did they have in, like, preparation? Because you can't just magically make a slingshot. Like, for the battle, how much time did they have in preparation? Oh, that's a good, that is a good question. Uh, well, uh, about, well, I don't know the exact hours, but we know that David was actually not at the army with the Israelites. Because David, you'll hear in a minute, David was a, a shepherd. Do you know that? What's a shepherd? Someone who herds sheep. Someone who herds sheep. Have you ever seen sheep? Sheep. Have you ever seen sheep and out in a field before? David was out with the sheep, and he he wasn't actually actually at the battle. He was far away, so it took a while for him to come back and forth. The exact time I don't know, but that's a good question. But he had a slingshot with him. That was partly. That's an interesting thing. He already had a slingshot. That's what God used to help Goliath fall. Do you know why he had a slingshot? Why would a shepherd have a slingshot? Any idea? Maybe to like, I don't know, distract the sheep or something? Yeah. Do you think there would ever be animals that would want to try and get the sheep? Yeah. What type of animals would want to come and attack sheep, do you think? Wolves. Say that again? Oh. Wolves. Wolves, yeah. Wolves. So David had that slingshot with him to protect his sheep. He didn't have to go to battle with any big weapons. He went to battle with what he knew what to do as a shepherd. Rock. So this week, when you're out in the playground, or maybe you're going to the lake because it's a hot day or a pool, I know you like to go to the pools, find a rock and think, God, just use rocks to bring down the people of God's enemy. And I love how creative you are with yours, William. Bob, that God has us some humor too. That what might what might Mr. Bob do in helping bring down any bad in this world? He might bring some joy to people. 
or you might bring some kindness to people. Each one of you have different rocks and you're welcome to paint them too. But let us pray. God, we thank you for all of these kids. We thank you for their parents, their questions, the ways that they walk with you in humor, for creative things like Mr. Bob and other rocks. Bless them and their families. Help us to continue to guide and love them all along in their spiritual journey. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say together, amen. Amen. Thank you, kids. You're welcome to go back with your families. Isn't it good to see the kids? So, so good. Thank you. Hi. Oh, thank you, Henry. Thank you. I love you very much. Thank you, Lillian. I love you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Come on up here, Abby. Thank you. I love you. I love you all very, very much. And I love your hugs. Thank you. We love you. I'm going to think of Robbie as David now. <laughs> Let us pray, friends. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts lead us to you, the God of peace, the God of creativity, the one who is truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, this is a story that most of you know. I heard you all say Goliath, you know this story. So it's always a challenge when you have a familiar Bible passage that comes up to look at it anew and think about what's going on here. We see the children's Bibles and that's what we think about. But I want you to kind of step back in time. We are in the Middle East. Have any of you ever been to the Middle East? Some of you have. There's a wadi in this story. Do you know what a wadi is? It's a little lake, like a little reservoir of water in the middle of a desert. You know, I've been to Oman a couple of times and I actually got to swim in a wadi, which was pretty cool. So think about this, it's sunny. Uh, the Philistines stood on one side of the mountain and the Israelites stood on the other side of the mountain and a valley between these mountains separated them. The Philistines, they valued their military. They spent a lot of money on their weaponry and defense strength. From the camp of the men gathered in the Philistines, out walked one of their best soldiers. He was thick and sturdy as an oak tree. The bronze metal covered his body as if he were layering sweaters in the fall, but it was layers of metal for his weaponry. He had a long spear in his hand, and scripture says that there was a, another person that went out in front of him as a shield bearer. This was, this, was, this was a bad dude. And his name, of course, was, that's right. And Goliath was an impressive warrior. Goliath stood out to the Israelites and he egged them on, like kind of like a football game, maybe think of it in some sense. Come, come, come get me. Choose for yourself, he said, and let him come to me. If he wins, we will be your servants. But if I win, you shall be our servants. When the Israelites saw and heard this, they felt defeated already. And scripture said it, they were scared. Have you ever had that feeling where you feel defeated before the actual event happens? Maybe you receive news on how the cancer treatment is going. Maybe all of the paperwork for tenure seems just unmanageable. Maybe you learned that your kid was diagnosed with a disability. Maybe the medicine and the treatments you had all planned out aren't going as you had planned. Or maybe you have been helping your adult child and there comes a point where we say, can't help anymore. I'm sorry, we've tried everything. That feeling, that feeling of defeat, you know that feeling? Yeah, we've all been there. The battle isn't over, but all the facts and doctor's appointments and career counseling and conversations and teachers, it just feels defeating in itself. That's the feeling that Israel felt at that moment. 
And that feeling usually leads us to say, we'll find another doctor. We'll get the best opinions. I will change schools. I can quit my job and do something different. There's a fly. Or we can treat our family differently. We double down on our efforts at that point. But Israel did something. There's a bug there. <laughs> but Israel did something differently. At first, they wanted to send their best military in against Goliath, which is a very natural response. But David, our little Robbie, picture him in your mind here, the son of Jesse, he was the youngest son, the smallest son, and the son that wasn't even at war. He was attending the sheep and he was a shepherd came up to the army of Israel and he said, send me, I will go. Can you imagine the guys at the camp saying, oh, they are so young and enthusiastic when they graduate college. Look at him, he's just so much energy. I used to have that energy too. They didn't believe it at first. They thought this is ridiculous. At first Saul and his army were shocked and they said, no way. You are just a boy. And David, courageous and wise, said, I keep sheep. And whenever a lion or a bear comes and tries to take one of my lambs, I strike it down and I rescue them and I care for my flock. Goliath is nothing but a big bear. The brave young boy convinced Saul, obviously David had some skills and communication as well, and they sent David out to battle. Israel armored him with the best bronze plates on his body, a sword in his hand, and you know, you remember the Christmas movie, uh, A Christmas Story, when Ralphie's mom bandages up the, well, not, puts all the sweaters and the scarves and the little brother, and he walks out like this. I can't, Ralphie, Ralph, remember that scene? That's kind of what they do to David at that moment, but it's all metal. And he's out there clinking and clamoring. And it's a humorous moment that Brittany read that it was just awkward. He didn't fit this material. And so what happens is they remove all the warrior equipment he just looks weird and he's not going to win with it. This is not what he was used to fighting bears with. So he took off the weaponry and he went into battle as himself, a shepherd with a staff and a slingshot in his pocket. He went to the small lake in the desert and found five smooth stones. I don't know, Mr. Bob might have been in the lake as well, or maybe the peace stone. And he put the five smooth stones in his shepherd's bag, and he went off to face Goliath. David did not have to become someone he wasn't in order to face his challenge. David did not have to choose the mighty path. He would not have conquered Goliath with the sword. David did what David knew how to do, protect the lambs and care for his people. You can almost hear and sense that Goliath felt so mocked at this moment. I bet that enraged him even more that they sent the smallest one to fight him. But David pulled out his stones and with his slingshot struck Goliath right in the forehead and Goliath fell face down into the ground, defeating him and shaming him because his face was in the ground and covered with sand. We all have Goliaths that feel really big and like they try to mock us, don't we? Think about your own life for a moment. It might not be Uncle Goliath, but if you have an Uncle Goliath, let me know, please. But think about the things that tower over us and weigh on our heart and mind. It might be the grief from a loved one who died that feels like it's towering over us. Perhaps family divisions that make us feel weary and we wonder, will there ever be reconciliation? Days and hours sitting in doctor's office seeking treatments and medical plans 
had seemed to never end. Even this recent heat wave this week can feel like a towering Goliath in our lives. This is just the list of personal issues. We could go on and on with what's going on in the world. The world is not short of Goliaths, both personal and in our culture. But what we know in scripture is that we don't have to be somebody we are not. We don't have to bolster up with great weaponry or pretend to be someone else. God works through the ordinariness of our daily lives to prepare us with wisdom and courage for the Goliaths we face in our life. That is what all of scripture is when God does what God does in this world. God uses ordinary people like you and me. The biblical characters are just ordinary people that got a big platform in the Bible. Ordinariness is what God uses to defeat the Goliaths. With the ordinary, earthy elements such as five smooth stones, Goliath fell. Your smooth stones might be the connections you have in our community or politically or religiously. Your smooth stone might be your patience. Your smooth stone might be your faith, your humor, the ability to help communicate or teach. Your smooth stone might be your music. Could be the connection you feel to your church family, your creativity or your artistry, or your ability to imagine what could be different and could be better. There are so many different types of smooth stones in this congregation. Each of you have your own smooth stones. Smooth stones come in all shapes and sizes. And God has given you these tools because all that you have learned so far in your life, it is not wasted. All of the skills you have acquired in your life so far are skills you need for this moment. You have five smooth stones in your life because God doesn't send us to face our Goliaths without tools. Goliath looked unbeatable. In the sight of a young kid without armor or sword approaching this great giant must have made the Philistines laugh. And perhaps the Israelites a little worried, will this actually work out? But God makes a way when it seems like there is no way. God is the one who goes before us and stands beside us. Perhaps this week, you may want to go to an archery range and practice precision and think about the tools that God has given you. You can go there and say, my pastor told me to go to an archery range and practice the sermon. Or maybe you want to head to a body of water and find five smooth stones and think about the skills that God has given you. Each one of you have so many gifts. You have five smooth stones in your life. The song this week that we have, uh, that we're going through with our devotional, which if you haven't received yours, there is some in the back of the sanctuary, is the song Room to Fall. We sent this out on Wednesday. I encourage you to listen it and to it and think about your own battles in your life, your Goliaths and the way that God has gifted you. There are many Goliaths in this world. I know that. I feel that. And I know you do too. But David was not the strongest, but he did have the tools to face Goliath and bring him down. With God's help and with God's strength, we do too. Goliath will fall. Trust that God will make a way. Let us pray. God, give us the wisdom to know what our stones are. Give us the strategy to know how to use them. And like David, may our focus be on you, the one who gives us strength, the one who gives us hope. Through Christ our Lord, amen. You're welcome to turn into your hymnal to hymn number 436, the hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory. You'll notice the phrase, uh, I use also in the prayer of confession, which has been my prayer a lot these days, particularly the summer, from the prayer of confession, grant us wisdom 
grant us courage for the living of these days. It's from this hymn, which was a hymn writer who served at Riverside Church in New York City. But as with all hymns, they're prayers. So really pay attention to the lyrics as we sing this together. Let us sing. Isn't that a beautiful hymn? Yeah, that's beautiful. I encourage you, you may be seated. I encourage you to, to look at that hymn, read it, um, find it on YouTube. It's been a, a hymn that's been a prayer guiding me this whole summer particularly. We turn to each other in prayer. Our prayers come from you and from you at home. And we love to know how we can be praying with you and for you and also celebrating God's graces and joys in your life. As I mentioned, I'm not 
able to walk too quickly right now, so Miss Lois is so kind and will be, oh, and you need a microphone, um, will is so kind and will come around. If you have a prayer request, thank you, Lois, uh, please feel free to raise your hand. Uh, she'll share the microphone with you, and if you have a prayer of praise at home, uh, Jesse is on the screen and will read your prayers, and we'd like to be praying for you. What can we be praying together for, church? My close neighbors, the Illingworths, uh, had a loss last night. Uh, Lynn passed away. It was not unexpected. Uh, it's, it's been a while that he's been suffering. Uh, so uh, just wondered if anybody remembered Lynn. Uh, he spoke here as a pastor at our church, I don't know how many times. Uh, just the dearest, sweetest man. Uh, family would certainly appreciate prayers. And if you knew them, a card, whatever anyone is comfortable doing. Thank you. Thank you, June. Our prayers are with your neighbors and may God's grace surround them all and you right now. For my cousins to have a fun vacation, they're visiting from California and they're staying in Pittsburgh with my aunt. We pray. Thank you very much. Prayers today for uh, Barb Chelman and this uh, terrible heat that's there. It takes a lot out of the elderly people. and. Uh, Keep Barb in your prayers, and also uh, remember uh, Jean Cole. Uh, Jean's had a rough, rough time, and so uh, please keep Jean and June Brown. The Jean and Junes are both over at uh, Juniper Village, and keep them in your prayers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wayne. Other prayers or thanksgivings that you want to share? I can chime in with a prayer for our pastor's knee. Thank um, you. <laughs> Thank that, you. That there will be healing and, and repair or whatever is needed there so that she can Thank dance you. and sing. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Lois. And my patient, 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 patient wife. <laughs> we pray. <laughs> oh, Brittany. I've got one real quick, yes. Okay. Um, pray, we're just thankful of the timing of this passage or in the scripture and the reading today, everything, the sermon, uh, I feel like there's a lot of Goliaths just in everyday life and it gets overwhelming. So I'll repeat a last prayer that I'm moving at the end of the month, just over to Bullsburg, nothing to be uh, concerned about, no worries, I'm, I'm still here. Um, but it, yeah, it's my first move without a partner or I guess a family. Ooh, didn't know it was gonna be sad, sorry. Um, or family close by, so it's been hard. So, so thanks for everyone. Um, Sorry, it's such a simple thing, but thanks to everyone who's already volunteered to help um, and just keep me in everyone's prayers. We love you very much, Brittany. Very, very much. One of your smooth stones is this church. We love you, all of you. You have a smooth stone in this church. Other prayers. Jesse, are there prayers online that you'd like to Yeah, and from home, I'd love to hear. Yes, uh, good morning. There are a couple online here. And um, I'll start with uh, Jay. She's asking for prayers for the Disciples of Christ Church where she's staying. Their uh, minister has COVID. Um, prayers also for Kat, who starts a job tomorrow. And finally, uh, travel mercies, please, as uh, she journeys to Kentucky on Saturday for her new placement. Mm. Jane Childs is asking for her prayers for our friends in Ukraine. They are starving and terrified and grieving, but they have not given up hope. 
pray for them for victory against the Goliath that continues to lie and destroy them. Leah is asking for prayers for her friends, Ben and Emily. They lost their two-year-old daughter, Naomi, last week, and um, they need a prayer to understand how to navigate this loss. And finally, Marilyn Engel is asking for prayer for her daughter-in-law, Vanessa, as she sees more neurologists in Salt Lake City and as they uh, go forward with her diagnosis. Thank Those you. are our prayers online. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you to everybody at home who is worshiping and shared your prayers. And uh, whether you're in an RV or in your home or out in the garden, we are praying with you and for you and all of the prayers that you've spoken. Please know that we're covering you in love and God's grace. And we're walking right with you um, through the medical appointments, um, through traveling to Kentucky. I know, Jay, that's your next placement. Um, our love goes with you and you are not alone. And more importantly, God is right, right beside you all. Any other prayers in here that we're missing? Thank you so much, Lois, for walking and for praying. Uh, all of the prayers that we've uttered and all of the prayers that are in our heart, I know oftentimes on Sunday people might be going in their head, oh, maybe, maybe I want to raise my head. Maybe I don't want to raise my hand. If you're thinking it, everybody's thinking it. So know that all of the prayers that are in your heart, we are praying for uh, as well. And more importantly, God is praying for. So let us join together in one voice and in one spirit in prayer to our God. God, our creator, God who is love, God who became one of us in the flesh in Jesus and knows our Goliaths, had Goliaths yourself and walks the road with us. Hear all of our prayers that we've uttered out loud and the prayers in our heart. Receive them in your mercy, O Lord. For people who are grieving, who have lost loved ones, we pray for your mercy and grace and for all the tender, soft places for hearts to land to heal. We pray for our friends and our loved ones in this church who are at home worshiping, Jane Cole, June Brown, Barb and Alva, Jim and Sally, we pray for Wayne and Edna as well here, and all of us as we seek to do your will gently and peacefully with your grace and with your mercy. We pray for peace among countries and around the world. Of course, Ukraine is in our heart and mind. Countries with unclean water, little food, the elements of the heat and weather bearing upon them. God, be close and be merciful. We pray for our country, for we know many Goliaths of many forms. We pray for the wisdom, the resilience, the focus, the stamina, and the peace to know what you've called us to. We pray for everybody seeking medical care and medical attention. We pray for wisdom for doctors, relief from pain, and gentle places to heal. For all of our prayers, for all of our work and our family and what lies ahead this week, the questions in our heart, the joys in our heart, the things that make us smile and delight, and the way we're longing to delight, God, receive our prayers. Surprise us with joy this week. Surprise us with love. In your mercy, receive our personal prayers in this moment of silence.
in the unity of our faith. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer found in our bulletin in one voice together. Of our loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those against us. To temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. People of God, there is an offering plate in the very back. You're welcome to place your offering in there, as well as the QR code, both found in the bulletin and on your screen at home. Our special offering for the month of July, it goes to Out of the Cold Ministries, which helps those who are experiencing homelessness right here in our community. Please stand in body or spirit as you are able and let us sing our praises to our God in the doxology. As we remain standing, let us open our hymnal together to our sending hymn, hymn number 403, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Let us sing our faith and our strength together.
On Christ, the solid rock, we do stand. This is one of your five smooth stones that you have for the Goliaths that you face personally and as we face as a world. And as you go forth from here, receive this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God look to you and bring you peace. Go forward this week knowing how much Jesus loves you. Share that love with the world around you. Go forward in faith, and we'll see you next week. God bless.